Jesus, the way, the truth, the life. An account of the life and ministry of Jesus that reveals what he was like, what he taught and did, and how you can benefit. The Way, the Truth, the Life You likely are pleased to get good news, and there definitely is very good news for you and your loved ones. This good news is in the Bible, a book that the Creator of the universe, Jehovah God, caused to be written years ago. In this publication, we will focus on four Bible books that contain very good news for all of us. They are identified by the names of the men whom God used to write them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Many refer to these four accounts as the four Gospels. All four relate the Gospel, or good news, about Jesus, that He is God's means for salvation, and that as King of God's heavenly kingdom, Jesus will bring permanent blessings to all who exercise faith in Him. Why four Gospels? You may have wondered why God inspired four accounts of Jesus' life and teachings. There are benefits to having these separate accounts of what Jesus said and did. To illustrate, imagine that four men are standing near a famous teacher. The man standing in front of the teacher has a tax office. The one on the right is a physician. The man listening from the left side is a fisherman and is the teacher's very close friend. And the fourth man, located at the back, is an observer who is younger than the others. All four are honest men, and each has a distinct interest or focus. If each writes an account of the teacher's sayings and activities, the four records would likely feature different details or events. By considering all four accounts, bearing in mind the varying perspectives or objectives, we could get a complete picture of what the teacher said and did. This illustrates how we can benefit from having four separate accounts of the life of the great teacher, Jesus. Continuing the illustration, the tax man wants to appeal to people of a Jewish background, so he groups some teachings or events in a way to help that primary audience. The physician highlights the healing of the sick or crippled, so he omits some things that the tax man recorded or presents them in a different order. The close friend emphasizes the teacher's feelings and qualities. The younger man's account is briefer, more succinct. Still, each man's account is accurate. This well illustrates how having all four accounts of Jesus' life enriches our understanding of his activities, teachings, and personality. People may speak of the Gospel of Matthew or John's Gospel. That is not inaccurate, for each contains good news about Jesus Christ. Mark 1, 1. However, in a larger sense, there is but one overall Gospel or good news about Jesus available to us in the four records. Many students of God's Word have compared and harmonized the events and facts found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. About 170 CE, the Syrian writer Tatian endeavored to do so. He recognized these four books as accurate and inspired, and he compiled the Diatessaron, a harmonized account of Jesus' life and ministry. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, does similarly, but it is more accurate and complete. That is possible because we now better understand the fulfillment of many of Jesus' prophecies and illustrations. This understanding clarifies the things he said and did, as well as the order in which events occurred. Archaeological discoveries have also shed light on certain details and on the writer's perspectives. Of course, no one can be dogmatic about the sequence of every event. 
But Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, presents what is reasonable and logical. The way, the truth, the life. As you read and enjoy this book, try to bear in mind the primary message for you and your loved ones. Recall that Jesus Christ himself told the Apostle Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. Jesus, the way, the truth, the life, will help you to appreciate how Jesus definitely is the way. Only through him is it possible to approach Jehovah God in prayer. Moreover, Jesus is the way for us to be reconciled to God. Hence, only through Jesus can we have an approved relationship with God. Jesus is the truth. He spoke and lived in harmony with truth. It was as if truth arrived in the person of Jesus. He fulfilled scores of prophecies, which became yes by means of him. 2 Corinthians 1, 20. Such prophecies help us to see his central role in the outworking of God's purpose. And Jesus Christ is the life. By means of the ransom, his giving up his perfect life and blood, he made it possible for us to gain the real life, that is, everlasting life. 1 Timothy 6, 12 and 19. He will also prove to be the life for millions who have died, but who will be raised to life with the prospect of living in paradise forever. All of us need to appreciate Jesus' role in God's purpose. May you enjoy learning more about Jesus, the way and the truth and the life. Section 1 Leading up to Jesus' ministry. This one will be great. Luke 1, 32. Chapter 1. Two messages from God. Luke 1, 5 to 33. Chapter Overview. The angel Gabriel foretells the birth of John the Baptist. Gabriel tells Mary of the coming birth of Jesus. We can consider the entire Bible to be, in effect, a message from God. Our Heavenly Father has provided it for our instruction. Consider, though, two special messages that were delivered over 2,000 years ago. They were delivered by an angel named Gabriel, who stands near before God. Luke 1.19 What were the circumstances under which the angel provided those important messages? It is about the year 3 BCE. Where does Gabriel deliver the first message? In the Judean hills, probably not far from Jerusalem, there lives a priest of Jehovah by the name of Zechariah. He and his wife Elizabeth are no longer young, and they have no children. It is Zechariah's turn to serve as a priest at God's temple in Jerusalem. While Zechariah is at the temple, Gabriel suddenly appears near the incense altar. Understandably, that frightens Zechariah. But the angel calms Zechariah's fears, saying, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, because your supplication has been favorably heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to name him John. Gabriel adds that John will be great in the sight of Jehovah, and will get ready for Jehovah a prepared people. Luke 1, 13-17 To Zechariah, that seems unbelievable. Why? because of his and Elizabeth's age. So Gabriel tells him, You will be silent and unable to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words. Luke 1, 20. Meanwhile, the people outside are wondering why Zechariah is taking so long inside. Finally he comes out, but he cannot speak. Zechariah can only make signs with his hands. It is evident that he has seen something supernatural while in the temple. After Zechariah finishes his service at the temple, he returns to his home. Soon thereafter, Elizabeth becomes pregnant. 
For five months, while awaiting the birth of her child, Elizabeth stays at home away from people. Then Gabriel appears a second time. To whom? To a young unmarried woman named Mary, who lives up north in the region called Galilee, in the city of Nazareth. What does the angel tell her? He says, You have found favor with God. Gabriel goes on to tell Mary, Look, you will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Gabriel adds, This one will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and he will rule as king over the house of Jacob forever, and there will be no end to his kingdom. Luke 1, 30-33 you can appreciate how privileged Gabriel must feel to deliver these two messages. As we read more about John and Jesus, it will be clear why these messages from heaven are so important. Questions for review. Who delivers two important messages from heaven? To whom are the two messages delivered? Why do you think are the messages from heaven so difficult to believe? Chapter 2 Jesus is honored before his birth Luke 1, 34-56 Chapter Overview Mary visits her relative Elizabeth After the angel Gabriel tells the young woman Mary that she will bear a son who will be named Jesus and who will rule as king forever, Mary asks, How is this to be, since I am not having sexual relations with a man? Luke 1, 34 Holy Spirit will come upon you, Gabriel answers, and power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the one who is born will be called Holy, God's Son. Luke 1, 35 Perhaps to help Mary accept his message, Gabriel adds, Look, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, the so-called barren woman, for no declaration will be impossible for God. Luke 1, 36 and 37. Mary accepts what Gabriel has said, as we see from her response. Look, Jehovah's slave girl, she exclaims. May it happen to me according to your declaration. Luke 1, 38. Once Gabriel leaves,